Hello. In part one, I highlighted a range of themes that I plan to explore in this series. And in this session, my focus is on how artists recorded and reacted to the sociological, cultural, scientific and technological changes taking place around them. J.M.W. Turner embraced the industrial age in which he lived and painted several industrial scenes. This is rain, steam and speed, showing the Great Western Railway in action in 1844. It's in the National Gallery and those loose, rapid brush strokes are typical of Turner. Speed was a novel experience in 1844, just 15 years after George Stevenson's rocket first ran. Before that, the fastest life went was at the pace of a horse. Turner uses two diagonal lines to give the impression of speed and the eye is drawn along them into the canvas, a classic vanishing point. The scene is probably Maidenhead Bridge, crossing the Thames between Maidenhead and Taplow. You can see the road bridge on the left of the picture. This engraving by James Sharples is of his original oil which is now in Blackburn Museum and Art Gallery. It was painted in 1847. Its title is simply The Forge. Sharples knew his subject well. He was a blacksmith, taught himself to paint and took evening classes at Berry Mechanics Institute. In 1856, William Bell Scott was commissioned to paint a series of panels for Wallington Hall in Northumberland on the theme of the area's history. And Wallington is now in the care of the National Trust. For the 19th century, he chose as his theme, Industry on the Tyne, subtitled, Northumbrians show the world what can be done with iron and coal. And the result is a celebration of industry as a force for good. Dominating centre stage are three burly workmen in leather aprons. Their hammers are raised and with a fourth colleague, they're forging a wheel for a locomotive. The plans for the loco are at the bottom right of the picture, beneath a newspaper. A key point is being made here. These workmen can read. An example of one they built earlier is crossing a new high-level bridge in the background. It's not a real scene, of course. Bell Scott is filling his picture with as much detail as he can to reflect progress. The wires crossing the top of the picture are for the newly introduced telegraph one element in a series of vertical and horizontal lines that balance the composition. A young girl sits on a cannon barrel in the foreground with shells alongside, demonstrating this is a suitable place for a child. She's brought her father's lunch and is noticeably well dressed. The message here is that what her father earns from his honest labour enables him to provide well for his family. The tall factory chimneys in the background are all productive, all of them actively smoking away. On the river is a coal barge and a steamboat with a red flash on its funnel matching the glow from the forge. Behind the hammer men, a pit boy carries a Humphrey Davy safety lamp invented in 1815. And the dockside is a bustle of activity. Notice a girl with a milk pail on her head. The arrival of the railway enabled fresh milk to be delivered from the country to the city. And look closely, there's a photographer. Cutting edge technology in these, the earliest days of photography. A few years earlier, Ford Maddox Brown had painted a similar tableau, but with a subtler and more ambitious social commentary. It's called Simply Work, and there are two versions. There's a large canvas two metres wide in Manchester Art Gallery and a smaller version in Birmingham Museum and Art Gallery. Maddox Brown began this painting in 1852 on the spot in Heath Street, Hampstead. The central figures are navvies digging a trench for water pipes to be laid and in the distance two girls fetch pails of water from the medieval wells that were subject to serious pollution in the overcrowded city. The provision of clean drinking water will help to tackle the endemic problems of typhus and cholera. 
Maddox Brown admires these men and their engagement in healthy, honest outdoor work. He said of them, here are presented the young navvy in the pride of manly health. Contrast them with the man in the left foreground who has been foraging in the countryside, barefoot and ragged, he's scratching a living as best he can. He's been foraging for something he can sell. It's possibly chickweed for feeding to cage birds. Of him, Maddox Brown says, he lives in Flower and Dean Street, where the policemen walk in twos and the worst cutthroats around him, but he is harmless. Behind him are two smartly dressed women, clearly ladies of leisure. One of them is distributing improving tracks, which the workmen ignore. Behind them, a porter balances a tray of pastries on his head, a symbol of luxury. Approaching on horseback is a bearded man in a top hat and bright yellow waistcoat. His daughter rides alongside. Maddox Brown suggests he's an ex-army officer and now an MP. Supplying the navvies with a refreshing glass of ale, it's a hot July day, is a short stocky man in a bow tie sporting a black eye. He probably does the throwing out back at the alehouse. Ford Maddox Brown depicts him as a spirited urban survivor from a deprived childhood. The exact phrase he uses is something like, he is an example of town pluck. Which brings us to the group of ragged children in the foreground. The older girl's dress is too big for her, probably her late mother's. It is she who now looks after her siblings. Father, Maddox Brown implies, is in the alehouse. On the verge, in the shade, lie the jobless. Some are Irish immigrants. This was painted shortly after the Irish potato famine. In the distance, some of the unemployed have been hired for a day to carry placards promoting a prospective election candidate. On the far right, an orange seller is jostled by a policeman. In this vignette, we're shown a cross-section of society the beggars, the rich, the labourers, those living hand to mouth, and in the right foreground, those who look idle, but in fact work with their brains for the benefit of society. These two men are Thomas Carlyle, he's the one wearing a hat, an influential writer on social issues, and beside him, the Reverend Frederick Maurice, a pioneer of the Christian socialist movement founder of the Working Men's College, which offered both men and women education in arts and crafts skills. Ford Maddox Brown taught there unpaid, as did William Morris, Edward Byrne Jones, John Ruskin and others. A poster for the college is pasted on the wall. Beside it is one for a boy's home and a reward poster offering £50 for information leading to the arrest of a highway robber. It's a complex work of art and a social statement that had a profound effect, influential in both exposing inequality and social problems and hinting at how they might be solved through understanding, education and the opportunity of undertaking decent, honest work. In part one, I mentioned the revival of interesting Gothic architecture that took place in the 19th century and I'll return to consider that topic in more detail next time. If you've enjoyed this video hit the like and subscribe buttons and click on the notification bell to be informed when the next video is available or you can subscribe by clicking on the rose window over my shoulder.